लव अंडलीट लीव लव अंडलीट लीव एक्सेम्परली लव ऑथेंटिकली अंडलीट रिलेशनली This is the Inspired Family Leader program with Samuel A. Bakuta na your host, a certified executive coach, an award-winning leadership consultant, a global speaker and author. The CEO of Inspired Leaders International, an international leadership development firm that empowers leaders to transform nations. Your provincial fathers in your president. What a joy to have you today. I would say good morning, good afternoon, good evening depending on where you are watching us from around the world. This program is here to empower, equip and challenge men to expand their family leadership capacity for national transformation. And today, we are going to be talking about the importance of having loyal friends as a man. Having loyal friends as a man. Do you have a friend at all? Do you have a man in your life that you can call a friend? Do you have that kind of a man that you can call at midnight and you say brother jack or patrick or james or steven or somewhere or dixon or daniel i have a challenge please come to my rescue and he leaves his bed he leaves his wife at 1 a.m in the morning and he runs to be of help to his great friend having loyal friends as a man and to talk about this with me to have this conversation together is somebody who is a loyal friend <laughs> and someone who is a loyal friend to many and has many uh, loyal friends in his own life someone i have known uh, for the last 7 years to be specific ever since 2006 september when we met at some place where we were trying to be equipped and empowered to be more inspired than we were then to be greater leaders that's none other than our brother Stephen Setimba who happens to be uh, the child care director at Africa Renewal Ministries Stephen you're welcome thank you so how much how are you doing i'm doing well good to see you good once see again you. it's a joy i think we last saw each other was it in january I put, in Uroba at the Africa Renewal University. We probably met on the Daniel's fellowship too. <laughs> uh -uh. That one was But online. <laughs> I mean physically. <laughs> But physically we were with we, we were together in Buloba. Yes. Uh, we are having a retreat at Africa ago. Renewal Ministries. Yes. Yeah, and um, again rejuvenating mm -hmm. our purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, connecting together yeah. and uh, praying as a team. It was quite That something. was a very beautiful time <laughs> and you blessed us a lot. So, Thank you. Yeah. It was good indeed. Yeah. Well, so you're very welcome to this program. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to hosting you here. <laughs> I've been trying to dodge you. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. You are already here today. <laughs> Because I've known you honestly speaking as a as a strong man of faith, I've known you as a mobilizer of people, as an organizer of things, you know. I've known you as a loyal friend. Thank so you. So it's been my pleasure to finally get you onto this program today. Thank you so much. As we speak to the men of this country, yes. the men of this continent, the men of this world about having loyal friends. Amen. So why don't you go right ahead and uh, introduce yourself to our viewers? Well, thank you so much. Um I think as Samuel has has shared part of it, I serve with Africa Renewal Ministries, but I'm a passionate minister of the gospel. Uh, I love to serve people. And um and God has been so gracious. Mm. I have been married to one wife. Uh we have moved for now 13 years. Oh, well done. This year we celebrated <laughs> our 13 year anniversary. Yes. Uh we are blessed with three children. Mm. Uh two girls and one boy. So at least I have a very busy net nest <laughs> to to deal with. Yes. And um yes, I think apart from that, uh I again I I serve with Gaba Community Church as one of the pastors there. So mm. apart from the professional mm. space that I get to do, I serve with Gaba Community Church as one of the pastors there and and that has been for quite some time. Mm. Uh again also in addition to that, you talked about mobilizing. Yes. I uh, I passionately mobilize professionals mm. uh for the Daniel's Prayer Fellowship yeah. which is a virtual fellowship that we are holding every Thursday it's mm. almost now going to be making two years wow um virtually every morning men and women in the marketplace wake up early at 5:45 to be on a Zoom call to pray 
but also to inspire each other. That is quite something. Yes. Every day, having yes. those professionals online, it is quite something. Amen. It's quite something. Amen. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. So, today our conversation centers around having loyal friends mm -hmm. as a man. Yes. This program is a leadership program. Yes. Centering on leading the family. Mm. So, now that we are talking mm -hmm. about having loyal friends, let's begin from here. Does a man's friends actually impact or affect his leadership over his family? Um, that's a very good question, Samuel. And when I, when I hear the question, it reminds me of, um, of a series, a yes. movie. I think it's a Ugandan series. Mm. Uh, it was on NTV. And the woman was talking to the man, yes. the husband, mm. and was telling the husband, I see you have so many friends, mm -hmm. but when you come back home, mm. bring back good things. <laughs> <laughs> I see you have very many friends. So when you come back home, please come with good things. Bring back good things. Not bad things from your friends. <laughs> Not bad things from your friends. Because, um, <laughs> and, and, and you know, when you, when you begin to think about it, then yes. you begin to realize how friends that we hold as men mm. impact us when it comes to how we lead our families, mm -hmm. how we think, mm -hmm. um, how we respond to situations, mm. how you deal with your wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I would say that uh, basically a man's friends have an influence on his leadership in a way. Wow. Yeah. That's quite serious. Indeed, Very much they so. say, tell me who your friends are. And I will tell okay. you who you who are. You are. Yes. <laughs> I will tell you your character. I will tell you your character. Yes. And uh, I recently changed it a little bit. These <laughs> days I say, tell me your friends and I will predict your future. <laughs> I will prophesy about your age. <laughs> that is well said. <laughs> so as a man thinketh, yes. so is he. Mm -hmm. And who inspires and influences your thinking, mm -hmm. it comes back to the kinds of people yeah. that you hang out with, mm -hmm. the kind of conversations you hold. Yeah. So eventually, um, whether you know it or not, you begin to realize that you're beginning to respond mm -hmm. like your friends mm -hmm. in your marriage mm -hmm. if you're not very careful. I hear you. Yeah. In one of my books around 2012, 13 yes. years, 11 years ago, mm -hmm. I, a book on professionalism as mm -hmm. a key to society transformation, I said if you walk with nine fools, you become the tenth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you can't you can't you can't escape. You can't. Similarly, escape. if you walk with nine wise people, it's difficult for you to not become one of them. Exactly. So I hear you. Indeed. Exactly. So coming to this yes. topic of having loyal friends as a man, yes. let's begin from where we should begin. Yes. Who is a loyal friend? Who or what is a loyal friend? Well, um, when you, it, the dictionary has an interesting definition, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you two definitions, mm. but. One of it is, is someone that you can confide into. Mm -hmm. Is someone who is available. Mm -hmm. They love you. Mm. They know you. Mm. They trust you. Mm. But also you trust them. Yes. And, um, and it talks about someone who knows your past. They know your, your, your present. Mm. But they trust your future. They, they believe about what you're saying about your future. They know your past, they see your present, they believe your future. Exactly. Interesting. So, but, but they stick closer. Mm -hmm. um, and sticking closer means that um, they hold virtues uh, of commitment mm. towards both of you, mm -hmm. each other, you know. Uh, they're faithful, they will be there when you need them. Yes. But the Bible has an interesting definition. Mm. And, and for me, there is no better definition of loyalty mm -hmm. like that which is demonstrated in the story mm. of David and Jonathan. Interestingly, that's what I read this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether incidentally or God incidentally. David and Jonathan's relationship set the bar high yes. for all of us. Mm -hmm. because, because here's Jonathan who is intended to be a king. Mm. The father wanted him to be a king. Yeah. But Jonathan realized that David is doing much better. <laughs> That's humility of the highest order. <laughs> humility. <laughs> but also, there's a way God connected their hearts mm. that Jonathan loved David. Yes. 
their friendship became more covenantal mm -hmm. than just I like you. Yeah. That <clears throat> that that they would go an extra mile to say we will fight for each other. Mm -hmm. We will fight for our families. Mm -hmm. And, and I like the part of families because you see that even with David. Yes. That even when Jonathan passed away, mm. he sought out for someone in Jonathan's family to do Somebody a with a difficult name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had to leave that for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so when you when you when you look at that kind of friendship that they had, mm. it gives us a better godly and a deeper godly definition yeah. of a loyal friend. Mm. Yes. Wow. So somebody who knows your past, observes your present, yes. but still believes your future. Exactly. With all your inconsistencies, yes. with all your... <laughs> <laughs> they will be like... To use the word that a friend used recently, yes. with all your goofings, <laughs> mm, but they still can stay with you, yes. be your confidence, be available, trust you, love you, know you, and even fight for you and exactly. believe that you have a future that they want to be part of. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. That sounds like a good list of the characteristics. Would you like to add anything more concerning the characteristics of this kind of a loyal friend to a man it's, besides this? Um, one of my mentors um, spoke something very interesting, mm. which I believe when it comes to loyal friends mm -hmm. should be true mm -hmm. and should exist mm. is honesty. Honesty. Friendship has to have that high level of honesty. You know, if you, if you have a loyal friend and this person is your friend, mm. then it means that there has to be that level of honesty between both of you mm -hmm. that you would not lie to one another. It has to be a safe place that you're able to talk about the good, mm. the bad, mm. and the ugly. And everything in between. And everything in between. <laughs> What does that mean? It means that the person that you bring into your space of loyalty, mm. they need to appreciate the king in you, but also need to also be able to, to cover and journey with you in the areas where you're struggling. You're putting it in a very moderate and uh, nice way. <laughs> you say they have to, uh, to see the king in you. Yes. I would want to say, and also tolerate the beast in you. <laughs> exactly. So, th so they need to be able to, to they know you, yes. black and white. Mm -hmm. But they, they, because they know your, your, your beast part, mm. it does not take away their appreciation for you for who God has created you to be. Yes. That when, when, when you're present, they, they honor what God has put in your life. That sounds like unconditional love, agape love. So there's that unconditional, but there's, they, there's that acceptance yeah. that I accept you mm. the way you are. Mm. So, <laughs> so are, you, you, you don't have to make up in their presence. Mm -hmm. so it means that you both have to trust each other. There has to be a component of trustworthiness yeah. between both of you. That sounds difficult to come across. Um, it does because you can't have a hundred loyal friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But uh, they but are not like uh, our Facebook friends. No. You are five thousand. <laughs> Those are your like friends. So they like you, <laughs> and, and that's they why are like friends, not loyal friends, just but liking friends. Yeah, and just to confirm that, mm -hmm. when you post something, mm -hmm. they will just press the like button. They like you. Okay, but they are not your loyal friends. Uh, probably they haven't even <laughs> read your, your post. Probably. I proved that, <laughs> and I proved it in a very graphic manner. I put a post on Facebook. Yes. Right now, as I say this, some of those people who follow me on Facebook yes. will, will know what I'm talking about. I put there a post on Facebook and I intentionally decided to make it long. Mm -hmm. So it was a long post. Yes. So I wrote, I said, uh, I will miss you, my dear wonderful friends. I've gotten this uh, um, ambassadorial uh, appointment. I'm going to be in the UK for the next couple of years. I've already talked with uh, my family. We will be moving together and we will spend a number of years there serving. Uh, 
you, our country Uganda but in the capacity of the ambassador it's been quite an awesome time being in this country and serving it faithfully this is now a different way of serving it and I will be moving next week then I continued and then down I said however I would like you to know that I appreciate the fact that you have read this far it was quite just a joke I am still here with you let me tell you then hundreds of people liked that post and then they came in the comment section it was a comedy oh we will miss you oh thank you for alerting us some time that you will not be with us oh you deserved this all the comments showed that nobody read to the end 600 comments so they are just liking sometimes without even reading. reading they only like the guy. They yeah. only like the lady. They only like <laughs> so I get your point, exactly. 311. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think um, to find such people is possible. Mm. I have one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and some of those people are people that um, God brings to you. Mm. The people that God may enable you to cross paths. Yeah. Or you begin to realize that you share the same values with this with this person, mm. um, but also you begin to realize that this person, every time I come before them and I'm sharing also my challenges, mm. um, you don't hear it anywhere else. Mm. Their confidence, <laughs> they mm. they cover you, mm. um, and and you don't see them bring up bring it up anywhere. Yeah then you realize that this person is worth trusting. Okay. Because everyone so they needs earn it. a loyal friend. Say that again? Because everyone needs a loyal friend. And let's go to that. Why does a man need such loyal friends in his life? Well, um, from, from my life, I have had one that I've worked with for the last 13 years. And... I have seen the benefit of having a loyal friend mm -hmm. because life sometimes can be tough. Yeah. Um, life is not all about um, money. It's not about just the things that we have. Mm -hmm. You may have money and be living a miserable life. Of course. So you or, can as well you, have money and live a very awesome yes, life. So and you may so have much. a great wedding and still have a tough marriage. <laughs> mm. So you That's may a have quotable quote. Yeah. So mm. <laughs> so you, you may have a great <laughs> a great, a great wedding. wedding and a miserable marriage. <laughs> a miserable marriage, and you may have um, yeah. So so it may, it may even be a job. Mm. So. For me, the journey that we have walked, and I feel that maybe just sharing yes. my journey would be helpful yeah. for some of you, is um, one of this person that I would call and consider a loyal friend. Mm. We have walked a journey for the last 13 years, and, and that journey has been of lifting up one another. Mm -hmm. It has been a journey for praying with one another. Mm -hmm. when, when you hit a wall as a man, mm you sometimes want to find someone to pour out your mind to. Yeah. Um, when your marriage is on the rocks, you sometimes want somebody to help you think through things soberly. Mm, not, sober reflection. And not just trying to say, trying to look for a place of saying you are the one who is right, mm. but to help you think through things soberly. Mm -hmm. But also, they walk with you the journey where you need to develop the tough muscles when you're going through tough times. Tough muscles for tough times. Yes. Sounds like a good title of a book. <laughs> I will leave that for <laughs> you to write. Tough muscles for tough times. Yes. Tough muscles for tough times. So, mm -hmm. so when you say, does a man need loyal friends? Mm. I would truly say that a man needs loyal friends mm. uh, because of the things that we go through life. Yeah. Um, there's so many people that end up being great. You see, they seem to have everything, mm. but they are living a lonely life. Yeah. And they have no space where they can be free. Mm -hmm. um, they have no space whereby they, you, you have people who <laughs> who can just laugh about it and say, well, yes, they saw you doing great things, but you, you're just able to be free. Yes. 
and and relax and be yourself mm. and and so with that not being present mm. you realize that the life of a man becomes very tough mm -hmm. there's a guy in the bible who who died of debts yes i don't know if he had loyal friends <laughs> he was a servant of god his mm. wife had to look for the prophet yeah. to say my husband died of debts Wow. And my children are being taken, are being to, taken to, be, to be sold. But if, if he had people that he could pour out that to, mm -hmm. he would probably um, be able to think things through. Mm -hmm. So friends, loyal friends are there to help you yeah. process through some of your journey moments. Mm. Your turning point moments. Yes. Life is not a straight line. Never. Sometimes there will be seasons when you're just in the crossroads. And you just need to pour out whatever is right or wrong yes you just need to pour out mm -hmm. and to help someone get you to a place of clarity yeah and, and i think as you pour out like yes. that to somebody that you trust yes it gives you emotion something i call emotional hygiene yes that you are able to now let me use the word venting vent out exactly using the analogy of a volcanic mountain exactly that you have this huge magma that is building up within you as a man because of the tough times you are talking about the different uh, difficult hard situations that you're going through whether they are financial relational marital yes. or they are mental and intellectual whether they are physical there are some things you're struggling with with your body there is that magma that is that there is that uh, you know volcano forming up within and so if the, there is no vent where you can yeah. safely share out these things yeah. th then some cracks happen in the earth crust of your life because the the magma must find a way to move out it has to it, it has, has to move to. out it has and to. when it doesn't then there are cracks and that's i think that's one reason why you see a man who has been okay you see a steven a samuel the man has been looking okay all is well and then all of a sudden you hear that he has killed himself yeah because Very I true. think now at that point the the top of the mountain has been blown off. Exactly. But if he had that vent, that safe space you are talking about, an environment for being himself, we wouldn't be seeing some of these yeah. su suicidal things and the situations among men. Um there's a guy who was sharing a story. He was he was with his friend. Yes. And they were laughing. The next day, um he, the mom calls him and tells him that your friend has hanged himself. Hmm. This is the guy who everyone would, he, he, he was very friendly, yes. very encouraging, um, everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, the mom calls and is like, this guy, your friend, he's gone. Just, he's gone. Has been knocked by a car. What happened? No, he just hanged himself. Yet they were together laughing the previous day. Yeah, so, so you begin to realize mm. that there has to even be a commitment to open up. There has to be a commitment to open up. But somehow, I don't know, but uh, my brother Stephen, for yes. some reason, it's a big challenge for men. Men, yes. we don't open up. Yes, we keep quiet. Yeah, we keep quiet, I think. Culturally, we've been... We've been uh, I don't know what to call it, socialized, quote-unquote, to somehow feel that as a man you should not talk about the challenges you're going through, you should not open up to somebody, you should sit on the apex of a knife and still smile and say, all is well, <laughs> step on a nail and smile. Yes. For some reason, when you go to where women are meeting, many times you find an interesting conversation. They yeah. open up, they bring out their intestines and put them on the table and talk. Exactly. And even talk about us there, man. <laughs> <laughs> and our vests and ETC. But for us, when we meet, it's a shallow kind of conversation. We are talking of jobs and all of that. When we are struggling with deeper issues. Is this a biological thing? Is it a spiritual bondage? Is it a cultural... What, what's this about? Um, I, I think I would say, and you've talked about the issue of being shallow. Mm -hmm. um, the issue of being shallow... In, in this kind of relationships comes because of an issue of not trusting. 
Okay, the lack of trust. The lack of trust. So are you trying to insinuate that men, we don't trust each other, but women trust each other? I think somehow we are trying to prove ourselves to each other. Okay. Sometimes. Okay. Ego. But yeah, the ego. the ego in us is trying to prove ourselves to each other sometimes. And, um, and then the other bit of it is, you're, you're, again, you're trying to protect your space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, you, you're insecure mm. of, of the information that you carry. Mm. You need help, but you're wondering, will, will I be able to, to say it here? Mm. And, and Samuel, when tomorrow we are annoyed, yes, <laughs> you want to bring it mad, up. We are mad at each other. <laughs> yes, you will not bring it up mm. because when you bring it up, it affects my ego mm. as a person. So what we are trying to protect is we are trying to protect our ego. Mm. We are trying to protect us. Mm -hmm. But in trying to protect us, we at times end up losing control. Mm -hmm. And it runs out of hand. Mm. Um, the other bit of it is some men have been wounded before. So what stops men from having such loyal friends? One, protecting their space or their insecurity. Two, struggling with their own ego. Three, lack of trust amongst themselves. But number four is what you've just talked about. Exactly. They yeah. have been hurt before. Yes. And usually when a man is hurt, sometimes they go far into deep, mm -hmm. in, into their caves, mm -hmm. that mm. they don't want to come out. Yeah. And, and, and you know, what that does is... Um, the the depression and and trying to to deal with your own struggles yes um uh increases because now you're you're looking at everyone is not a safe space so i think we owe to nurture friendship mm. and we ought to find spaces where that could be now some churches have um like we have life groups mm. um now life groups may be a very big group of so many other people yeah not everyone there it, it doesn't mean that that's where you're gonna you know pour out everything mm -hmm. but as you move into those spaces of fellowship mm -hmm. you find look out for men mm -hmm. of integrity mm -hmm. men who are faithful mm -hmm. men who have nothing to hide mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who are safe you you want you want to be with friends who are safe they're mm. not insecure about mm. you mm. um they don't care if you drive a very beautiful car they, they are not in any competition with you they are not in competition with you yes they have already won <laughs> 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 they are on path and even if they have not yes they your path is your path their yes. path is their path everybody's in their lane exactly and all they care about is true friendship yes see that Yes. So, um, so I, I really think that um, one has to go past the healing mm -hmm. to be able to look out for such uh, men that, that, that have that. Now, I would not say that if someone is, is in the church, they're already a self <laughs> no. space. No, no, no. We've not been hurt many. by many in church. Exactly. And many. that one is worse. Many. And that one is worse yeah. because of the kind of trust that you give mm. yeah so so i think we should be Actually, men I of should character just say we've been hurt by many yes let me be even more honest and say we've hurt many exactly yeah, we've not only been hurt by many <laughs> we have hurt many yes so I, I would say that we have we need to have a strong character yeah that we are able to cover one another all right and help each other so we are going to take a break yes Already you realize that loyal friends are not just a mere acquaintance. Not just a gentleman you meet and because you have met in a number of times in the same places at a hotel, at a conference, at a seminar, at a workshop, at a fellowship, in the meeting of the life group, at the meeting of Father's Union Christian Men Fellowship, at the bar, <laughs> at the sports center. Just because you've met twice at the swimming pool doesn't mean now, now you are loyal friends. This is somebody who is available, who is trusted, somebody you can pour out your heart to, and you know that this person is confidential. 
So we are going to take a break and when we come back, we will be asking ourselves, what do I need to do in order to get those loyal friends? And what do I, who do I need to be in order to also be a loyal friend to somebody else? And then we will also be uh, looking at some of the things that loyal friends should do together once they come together. Because you shouldn't only be loyal friends to just be loyal friends. No, no. There should be something productive that you are doing together in life. You're doing life very productively. And uh, by the way, c can a man have a woman as his loyal friend or that is stepping on a live wire? They want to go away. We are coming back. <laughs> Live exemplarily, love authentically, and lead relationally. <laughs> when you live exemplarily, you become credible. You become a good example. When you love authentically, you relate well with people. You will be trusted. And when you lead relationally, People will follow you gladly. Live, love, and lead. This is the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel E. Bakutana. And today we are talking about having loyal friends as a man. And by the time we took a break, we were looking at some of the things that stop us, the men, from having loyal friends in our life. Things like being under the yoke of the past experiences of heart that we have experienced and we have not overcome them. We trusted somebody and we were disappointed so we have not overcome that. So we choose to stay alone, to live alone and be lonely. We have looked at the issue of ego. <laughs> we are trying to be competitive, to put a face, to put a mask instead of being real, authentic and genuine. We have looked at protecting our spaces. We have a sense of insecurity and we have also looked at lack of trust. In studio with me is our brother Stephen Setimba talking with us and to us about this very important topic. Stephen. Yes, sir. We have just looked at the things that stop us as men from digging deep to be real, mm. authentic, mm. genuine, yes. to open up, yes. to talk, mm -hmm. to have real friends in our life. Now, if I feel convinced that I need to look at this issue critically, mm. what do I now need to do in order to also get such loyal friends in my life? Well, that's a very powerful question. Um, well, I met my loyal friend. Um, again, the way we met, we were going through a Bible study. Mm. And, 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 and we got to talk about issues that we are dealing with. Mm. And what I realized that got us to connect was the openness that we were both willing to allow ourselves to open one to another. So are you saying the, the feeling or the sense of the willingness to be open was first of all mutual, but also it was immediate? As soon as you met, you were... I would say because it was a journey, yes. but being able to realize that you're both dealing with the same thing. Okay. <laughs> you were united by your same yes. problem. Some people are united by their bottles. <laughs> Others are united by the Bible. Yes. Um, <laughs> some people are united by the same troubles. You, you and I got <laughs> united by our love for being better leaders. Exactly. When we met at the university <laughs> undertaking our Masters of Arts in Organizational Leadership and Management. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And you see, um, uh, uh, and Samuel, what you did is mm. that class would have been just the end of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But one of the things that I, don't, I, I can't forget yes. is taking time to think through and say, I want to write a note of appreciation mm. of what I see in you. Yes. So there are people who appreciate you in life mm. that would go an extra mile to even say it. Yeah. I, I didn't know you still remember that I, I, do. I wrote with my hand a note of appreciation. To I do, and, and I love to write. Mm. So I, I could think through what that took you to do that. For the whole class, one by one. Exactly. <laughs> so I didn't take it for granted. I didn't take wow. it lightly because I love to write. Mm. And so I realized that, um, wow, this took time. Mm. So someone has to come out of the mask Mm -hmm. to be able to go an extra mile, mm -hmm. to be concerned mm -hmm. about the other. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So what do I need to do as a person? I think the people that God is going to put on your heart mm -hmm. to go an extra mile to check on, mm. to go an extra mile to even pray for, mm -hmm. to go an extra mile to, to even ask, how are you doing? Mm. Mm. To go an extra mile to even let them know that, by the way, um, I believe in you. Yes. I trust you. And I think you have a great future ahead. Mm -hmm. Just imagine when those words are said to, a, to, to somebody, um, what they do to them. Mm -hmm. They begin to realize that you're watching them. Yes. And you're not just watching them, you're processing, processing through mm -hmm. what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what do I need to do yeah. to gain loyal friends? I think I need to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. As a person, I need to be able to be a man of character mm -hmm. to say what we say here mm. ends here. <laughs> with both we don't of us. find it as the headline for the next newspaper the following day. And not even with your wife. Mm -hmm. That's critical. You see, you see, because wow. this friendship is between me and you, and there may be things mm. that. I pour out to you that may need you to walk a journey with me yes. to get better mm -hmm. and may not be safe for you to pour out to your wife. Because she may also pour it out to her friend. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. before you know it. You see that man. <laughs> my husband told me that that man. Yes. Some of them bring it up as prayer requests, you know. In the and then they become prayer requests. Yeah, please, let's pray for our brother Jackson. You know, <laughs> yeah, he's suffering from gonorrhea of late. <laughs> let's pray that the Lord stands with him. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and think about that. So you, you want, because you want that person to come back again. Yeah. Two is... Um, I think there's a time as a person mm. I, I looked around and when I needed to get help, all the people around me were not seeing me as a person who needs help. Mm -hmm. They were seeing me as a person who is progressing. As a person who gives help. Who gives help. Yes. And then you realize that at times you find a problem, a challenge pouring out to get help. Mm. So. So, again, mm. for us as men, uh, we need to be able to create that platform, mm -hmm. that, safe, that safe space mm. for others to be able to come in and know they are safe and they will not hear it anyway. Then the other one is um, when we begin in conversation mm. and we are talking about I'm pouring out my challenges, mm -hmm. you never pour out your challenges. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what if I don't have them? It is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> if oh, while for you, them, you see them as challenges, I you, don't see them as such. If you don't have them, you had them. Okay, okay. And it will be very good for you to bring out that mm. which you once had mm. so that this person can be able to realize that they are not alone. Yes. You are not an angel downloaded the, the, from Mars or exactly. Machine. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes, yes. Exactly. So, mm. so you realize that when we have that mutual honesty mm. and mutual trust being developed, at the end of the day, we can be able to build up mm -hmm. that loyal friendship. Mm. So what do wow. I need to do is be honest, um, be a selfless mm. for people to trust you. Wow. Just like they say that if you want to get friends, be a friend. Exactly. <laughs> In other words, whatever you want to get, give it. Yes. Give it. Yes. And it will come back to you. Yes. Pressed down. Shaken Shaken together. <laughs> Shaken Running together. over. Running <laughs> over. <laughs> the same basket you use to take millet to your neighbor would be the same basket he may use as you come back with maize. Exactly. So you better take a big basket. And take a clean one. <laughs> and take a clean one. <laughs> wow. So if I want to get loyal friends, one, I need to come out of my mask myself. Yes. Two, I need to be concerned about others. And as a result, I need to pray for them. Number four, I need to check on them, give them that call or that yes. SMS, those uh, uh, male friends of mine. I need to be a safe place 
for them, but also I need to be a person of character that can be trusted. Exactly. Wow. So now I have done these things. Okay. And I have found the loyal friend. Yes. Or loyal friends, maybe two, mm -hmm. maybe three, mm -hmm. maybe one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say two. Let's even say three. So as loyal friends, what are some of the things that we need to be doing together in order to add value to each other as loyal friends? Um, I think there are several things that mm. could be done. Mm. We add value on the physical, mm -hmm. we add value on the spiritual, mm -hmm. we add value on the intellectual okay. part, on the mind, okay. the, the brain. Mm. And um, I, I think a true friend ought to be able to even have conversations on how are you developing your personal life. There has to be that conversation of mm. how are you getting better mm. with your personal life? What are you doing to grow? Mm -hmm. One of my friends was, we were having a conversation and it was like, hey, Stephen, what are you doing these mm. days mm. to grow? And I think mm. that was a very powerful question. Wow. Um, but that can only come from a friend who is safe with you. Yes. That they can be able to ask that. Um, you need to have conversations on how we are working spiritually. Mm -hmm. How is your spiritual state? Mm -hmm. Now, spiritual may be a bit of a high term, <laughs> but your relationship with God, mm -hmm. how are you working with your faith? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean, uh, are you speaking in tongues of late? No. Okay. Just means my yeah. relationship with God. Are you praying? Are you reading the Bible? Yes. Just those simple basics. Yeah. What is your relationship <laughs> with the Bible? Mm -hmm. Both of you together? <laughs> or there's a problem? Are you it's praying? just a nice book you love to have yes. on your shelf. And again, in that same space, you need to be able to say, if you're having a hard time, mm -hmm. man, I'm having a hard time fasting these days. Yeah. I'm having, having a hard time praying these mm -hmm. days. And, and sometimes it's not that you should always be able to give advice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's to listen and pray <laughs> and say nothing. <laughs> you know? I learned that in the marriage setting. <laughs> I used to go home as a consultant <laughs> instead of going home as a husband and, and father. So, yeah. So, uh, sometimes you just want to listen and say, let's pray about it. Mm -hmm. and, and not just give advice and, and, and appear to be very high, mm -hmm. knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so that is very, very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we we should be doing things that add value to each other, to one another, at different levels in different yes. aspects of life. Something on the physical, maybe add value to our health together. Yes. Maybe we exercise together. Exactly. Who knows? <laughs> There's a time <laughs> you had together. started to, yeah. to, to, to encourage me in exercise. And uh, I, I hope you were encouraged. <laughs> I, I only don't know. <laughs> I need to ask you that question. Bit. My brother Stephen, how yes. are you getting better in your exercise life <laughs> nowadays? <laughs> After the show. <laughs> and then of course in the spiritual aspect, how, how is yes. your relationship with God? Yeah. And Those then the are... intellectual level, maybe sharing books and uh, a good link, an article, so that we keep adding value to one another. And if you're married, mm. um, you ought to be able to say, how is your relationship with your wife? Mm -hmm. How is how is home? Yes. Um, how are you handling your children? Mm -hmm. So the conversation goes to that aspect, but also this is very very interesting. Mm -hmm. Samuel, mm -hmm. um, the the gentleman I talked about who we started the journey with, mm -hmm. eventually our wives big became along. friends. Yes. Okay. And and now they became our accountability couple. Do you see? But their children know our children. And they relate like brothers and sisters. It's very interesting. Um, you know, when, when I see their children, I see them as my children. When they see my children, they see them as their children. You know? Um, it's, it's, it's how the relationship begins to even grow to that level. So I think now, I think children. now on the list. Yes. So I think now on the list. <laughs> yes. I think now we, we need to, to remove some names on the list of those that have been saying they are friends. We meet and talk, but they don't want us to go to their homes and visit. Um, when we call them to visit us, they are not, they don't want to come. 
So I think those ones need to be removed from the list. Uh, they only want us to meet at the restaurant. Uh, they only want us to meet at office and at church. So if we can't be able to be in each other's homes so that our wives know each other and our children are able to relate with each other, I think those ones will remove them from the list of loyal friends. You don't remove. You, they may be developing. Is, is After we a year? About, we talked about a process. After two years? Every relationship, every development kicks up at a different time, so so give it time. You've saved them. <laughs> By the way, yes. Besides adding value to one another, yes. Can a man, yes, <laughs> have a woman as his loyal friend? All oh, that's touching a live wire. <laughs> the last time you, yeah, yeah, you talked about it, and and I think that. Um, that at the end of the day can turn out to be dangerous for you as a man. It's like uh, t turning a sugar cane into your walking stick on a, on a sunny day. Yes. Uh, when uh, thirst comes, you are likely to, to, you look at to it, change the, the walking you look stick at it into and it. You say, but can I eat it? Mm. Then you look at it. Mm. One day <laughs> you eat the sugar cane. <laughs> So you better, you better use a bamboo as a walking stick, not a sugar cane. Exactly. So because, because um, <laughs> uh, we're talking about loyalty, not just at the place, uh, at the place of I have a friend, mm. but we're talking about loyalty for your inner man development. Loyalty for your inner man development. What's that about? It's, it's this inner man mm. in you that is trying to get better mm. that is going through life mm -hmm. and it's going through a holistic life mm -hmm. you you're dealing with relationships you're mm. dealing with your journey with god you're mm. dealing with family you're dealing with marriage and so when you look at all those things mm. you realize that um you need to be able to open up to a person yes that at the end of the day the conversation doesn't end up into another direction. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I'm having challenges with my wife mm -hmm. and my loyal friend mm. is a certain is a woman. woman somewhere, mm. I probably may find a problem even telling my wife who that loyal friend may be. Mm -hmm. Um, I may end up always oh, running this, there. This loyal friend may want to solve the problem that you have with your wife. Exactly. By becoming the wife. <laughs> not becoming the wife, but playing a few duties that your wife should be the one playing. You see, so it becomes hard. It becomes hard. If we, if we really want to help our inner man, the, this, this inner person, to be able to express themselves out well, mm. In, in, in a righteous and holy way, mm -hmm. um, we need to be able to find ourselves in safe places okay. and put boundaries. Then, um, if, if, if my loyal friend mm. is a woman, mm. at the end of the day, you're going to create insecurity for your wife. Okay. She may start to wonder, this yes. kind of closeness. It's too much. Yes. Why, 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 why don't I, since you chose to marry me, mm -hmm. be your loyal friend? <laughs> than, than picking a Janet uh, yeah. or a, a, a Carol or a yeah, Weber. A Sharon. Yes, a Sharon. Mm. Um, it doesn't add up. It doesn't. Yeah, there has to be boundaries. Yes. As men, we have yeah. to put boundaries. Yeah. But th areas. does that mean that we can't have females as friends? We can have them as oh, friends. Right. Yeah, that's yes. important to clarify. We, we, we can have them as friends, mm. but loyalty yes. to the place it's of honesty different. and opening up yeah. is to help your inner man, okay. your heart. Awesome. Yes. So, now, what should a man do if his wife mm. does not actually like his loyal friends? So, Stephen is my loyal friend. We talk heart to heart, man to man. We love each other. We are like Jonathan and David. But my wife says, I don't like Stephen. That guy, I don't like him. You should stop that relationship with, the, with, with Stephen. Yet Stephen is my <coughs> close friend. Yes. He understands me. I understand him. He, 
we we deal with each other very well we don't teach other bad manners we are only <laughs> good truck but for some reason my wife doesn't like steven my loyal friend if i find myself at that place thank god i haven't yet found myself at that place <laughs> what should i do uh that's a tough question um because if your wife doesn't like your loyal friend mm-hmm. and if your really your loyal friend mm. is value add mm. adds value to you mm. i think the value add at the end of the day should be seen even in your marriage mm. um should be seen in the things that you are trying to do uh, as a family so i think it goes back to helping your wife mm. to begin to realize by the way this is why i like this person mm. but also the other bit of it is sometimes there may be a reason why mm-hmm. that you may want to listen in and say yeah. is my loyal friend mm. trying to probably come around when i'm not around okay <laughs> that that my wife feels like they're to, not safe okay Yeah, or so could there be something that my wife is discerning in exactly. the life of this man yes. that I may not have seen myself as exactly. yet exactly because we 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 have our black spots mm. so you want to probe deeper to say mm. why don't you like this person yeah where is the problem mm. yeah and, and that makes me want to ask a question yes. that I would personally not struggle to answer but yes. probably some people may okay so if i had my wife here and my very loyal friend here yes and i ask both of them a question to ask for advice and they give me different answers that are opposite mm-hmm. should i take the advice of my wife should i take the advice of my loyal friend <laughs> who cooks for your food <laughs> <laughs> it's not advice on the food <laughs> <laughs> you better know where you stay so <laughs> um <laughs> I I think I would still say um your wife uh-huh. should be the place that So we shouldn't to. start to say no no my loyal yes. friend told say me this, this and then you are yes. neglecting your wife's yes. advice and what they're yes. saying. You All should right. be able to listen. We just have yes. about 2 minutes to yes. wrap up this program. So yes. let me ask this how can a man in just less than a minute how can a man handle disappointment from a loyal friend i've loved this man he has loved me we have been together we have served together we have done great things together we have been confidential but somehow somewhere he disappoints me terribly whether it is you know putting out my information or whatever yes. it is how can i handle disappointment from a loyal friend in less than a minute as peter ore says having tough conversations mm-hmm. and um, there has to be that moment where you have to call your friend mm. your loyal friend mm. to say by the way you said this and you did this it didn't go well yes um what were you trying to achieve <laughs> You see? Hmm. Yes. Have a tough conversation. Yes, have the tough conversation because if you keep shutting out people at the end of the day you don't develop the muscle. Mhm. So sometimes you have to have the tough conversation. Okay. Yeah. So if there is a disappointment in this relationship, call the friend, have a tough conversation. Yes. I would like you to give your parting shot especially to the men who are still not convinced that loyal friends really matter after this one hour of conversation your parting yeah. shot yeah i would like to say that uh some things will be proved true when you walk the journey and i know that some of you have walked the journey uh some of you may have been hurt along the way um but i would like to say that life is sweet and better when you have people uh when you have loyal friends that you can open up to that trust and respect you but also believe in you um i would say that that helps us to to do better one can chase a thousand but two chase 10000 that's a mystery and that's the same mystery when we have friends that we walk the journey of life with to encourage us wow life is sweet and better when you have loyal friends in it yes 
Thank you for being an awesome friend to me for the last seven years <laughs> Thank you, of sir. knowing you. <laughs> what a joy it has been this evening sharing about the importance of having loyal friends in our lives as men. Life is indeed better and sweet when we have loyal friends in it. So as a man, go and think about this. Go and think about this. Who are your friends? Who can you say are the loyal friends? And are you a loyal friend to anybody? Can somebody call you their loyal friend? It's time for us to stop living a lonely life when there are fellow men out there that are willing to walk with us the journey of life. Life is more beautiful when we live it with other people that we can trust and they too can trust us. Until next time, you send an SMS to your loyal friend and say good night. See you next time. <laughs>